friends, here on the SFU Burnaby campus and online near and far, Convocation Fall 2021 is about to begin. For those in Convocation Mall, first, thank you for your patience and for following regional, provincial, and university event safety protocols to help keep us all safe and healthy. I have a few important announcements for your enjoyment and safety during the ceremony. As advised by re the regional and provincial health authorities, all guests are asked to remain in their assigned seats and the wearing of masks is recommended. And as per fire regulations, the aisleways must remain clear. In the case of an emergency evacuation, follow the directions of event personnel to the assembly point, which is located down the stairs behind you on the track and field outside the gym. Please proceed slowly and carefully. Those with accessibility needs should proceed to the Halpern Center located northeast of Convocation Mall. In consideration of all guests, we ask that you refrain from conversation during the ceremony and please turn cell phones on silent. For all graduates and guests near and afar, we encourage you to share your photos and messages on social media using hashtag MySFUGrad. And for our guests online, please join in the live chat during the program. With the audience online and here, please rise for the academic procession.
Is no up in the quaitel. You want hot squalowing chit, quiz chit wa a to t, a to tewa chit to soak soak whiten. Nays quiz snaz to tewa to milk. Namus the scot mashol stalmo. Namus amen to na asap to tewa to milk to tewa school out to. And slate quins kun man to me up. Chin kun man to me up. Elk to noy up, stu ta oak. Quis nigh up. A sap no quay up. Nath a sway up. Tail a squile. A swat squile. You want hearts, let's stay sap up. Chin kun man to me up. Elk to noy up. We're here in a place close to what we know as Sok Sok Whiten. We are the Skotmish people. We are here with such greatness in our hearts on the day that's your day to the students. All the hard work you've done to get to this point, this day is for you. You finally made it, all the hard work. I want to really raise my hands to each and every one of you for the hard work that you've done. Chin Kunman told me up. Congratulations to each and every one of you. We sang the song, a dream song, that tells about gifts that come to our people. When, when we do our hard work, when you follow what you know, your life, you follow it the best you can to be the best person you can, gifts will always come to you. That's what that song is about. Again, I want to raise my hands to each and every one of you. Chin kun man up. Congratulations. Osiam. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. It is my pleasure to introduce Elder Sequalia, who's here to give a formal greeting and welcome. Kayachten. I welcome each and every one of you to the ancestral traditional lands of the Skohot Mishokameo, Squamish Nation, Slaywatooth, Coquitlam, Semiamu, Kwantlen, and our family in Musqueam. Chen Quin Mentomi Yap Styles. Yitwan Halt Slolam. I'd like to thank my nephews, grandnephews, for the song about dreaming and where you're going to go in your lives with the paper, the parchment you get today. And I welcome you on behalf of our nations and want to say that you need to always think about Chen Chen Stwight standing and working together to hold each other up, support one another, and help each other. It's a philosophy, a value my grandfather taught me. And we need to do that and be Winoxus, respectful of each other as human beings as we move forward in life. And I'm going to ask you all, too, to have Winoxus for our traditional spiritual ways. We usually, my grandfather, Sequaltenta, and Al Salish Longhouse elders said we all have an inner energy a force, and I like Star Wars <laughs> and Baby Yoda because of the force. And we have that within us. If we believe in it, we can heal ourselves and help ourselves and help our family. And our elders say we receive that en energy from Creator through the top of our heads into our energy and we send it to each other. And they um, always say that um, can't have your arms like this, your hands like this, or your hands like this, because then you're blocking energy from Creator and from ancestors and each other. So now we're going to do Tai Chi yoga breathing. <laughs> or, and I say that so that I get you to relax and open your hands 
And I understand that chakras are the same. They believe you receive energy through the top of your head to the third eye into your chakras. So just open yourself and put your hands at your side. Don't block your energy. And um, take four breaths to ground yourself so you're ready to walk across the stage. And I'll say, Chen Quen Men Tomi Kakakanak Chesiyam. Yon si yon so tenoy up in man man squaw and to squalls to seats. Yon si yon man man equatal chet yop, siaya chet yop, o chameo chet yop, squaw and to squalls to seats. Asking you, Creator, to watch over and protect all of your children gathered here today and all of their families, friends, their villages where they're from, and communities and their villages and communities where you now live, work, and play, asking you to help them create her with their squall and the feelings in their hearts and mind. The two go together. Always remember emotional, mental, physical, and spiritual well-being and health, and help protect them and put a shield around them in the days going forward, and asking you, Creator, to hear of prayers for each and every one of them, to be able to Chen Chen Dwight stand and work together, holding each other up and helping each other in life or others that they see need their help, and to let today, Creator, be yet one halt dates up, an excellent work today. Tama Quetzi Snechem, those are my words. Chen Quin Mentomi up. I'm grateful and thankful to each and every one of you for allowing me to share these words and sing with my um, family here. And I just say, Tamakwitsi. Those are my words. Thank you for sharing that warm welcome, Elder Sequalia. Elder Sequalia is a member of the SFU Elders Program. And on our collective behalf, I'd like to extend this moment to pay our respects to elders past and present. Thank you also to members of the SFU Pipe Band, uh, internationally renowned for the fine music that you heard here this afternoon. Swowo Billy and Catalano, Victor Harry of the Squamish Nation for your drumming and song. Heishka, thank you. And of course, uh, it's an honor to be here today, particularly in person. This is only the second, the first one being this morning, of our in-person convocation and graduation ceremonies since 2019. And I can't tell you what a pleasure it is to be with students and family on this important day. And you may not know this, but you this afternoon are particularly lucky. Your colleagues this morning had howling wind and a little bit of rain, and so we look forward to a calm and joyous celebration with you this afternoon. It's an honor also to be here gathered as we are in the traditional territory of the Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh, Squamish, and Kitsilano people on whose territories, uh, our unceded territories, we are gathered and occupy here this afternoon. I'd now like to invite John V. Indesia, an undergraduate student in the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences, who is also a member of our SFU choir, and she will lead us in the singing of O Canada. For those of you online, please rise where you are if you're able and join us in song. The true, not strong and free. 
From far and wide, O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God keep our land glorious and free. O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. O oh Canada, we stand on God for thee. That was lovely. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, please be seated. It is my pleasure to declare Convocation Fall 2021 assembled for the purpose of granting of degrees. Madam President, members of the Board of Governors, Senate, faculty, honoured guests, graduates, family and friends, my name is Tamara Vruman and I am the Chancellor of Simon Fraser University. We're delighted and honoured to have you join us for Convocation today. In attendance, we have a number of distinguished guests, including uh, on, in the audience and on the platform, from Senate, Vice Presidents, Dean, and faculty. In particular, I'd like to acknowledge the Honorable Dr. Wally Opal, SFU Honorary Degree recipient, who will be giving the convocation address this afternoon. Our SFU alumni, legacy parents and families, and of course, all of you who are joining us online, locally, and from around the world. Please let us know where you're signing in from using the chat function on the online. Welcome. Honored guests, President Johnson, graduates, families, friends, faculty, and staff. It is truly an honor to be here to celebrate this important milestone with all of you today. And as we've said throughout the day today, it is simply wonderful to see so many of you here in person. Although we must remain vigilant to keep us safe, it's so great to see students being students again on our campus. It's what a university is all about. Big, diverse, dynamic, full of life, ideas, and energy. Buzzing with creativity, and activity. Over the last 18 months, we've worked hard to keep that spirit alive, even when it wasn't present in person. We've worked hard to keep teaching, to keep learning, to keep studying, to keep exploring through one of the most severe health and economic crises of our time. Indeed, the resolve and determination by all of you has reminded us of some very enduring truths. Ideas matter. Science and social science matters. Knowledge matters. They're part of the foundation upon which a humane, democratic, and inclusive society is built. A society that is able to confront big challenges, like a pandemic, and overcome them. But it is only part to secure that foundation, to overcome those challenges, we know that ideas and science and knowledge are not enough. They also must be paired with wisdom and empathy and understanding, most of all. Over the last 18 months, we've learned this lesson. But still, as you think about going out in your careers, I want to impart the importance of understanding paired with knowledge and ideas and learning. An example I'd like to share with you comes from my own life. I grew up in Kamloops in the center of our province. Depending on where you're from, it's either halfway to Calgary or halfway to Vancouver, uh, right in the very heart of the interior. Uh, my house was on a hill and it overlooked uh, what many of us now have come to recognize and know as the Kamloops Residential School. I looked at that residential school each and every day. 
of my young life uh, from my window. When I went to university, I took history, both at the graduate and undergraduate level, and I studied our colonial past. I knew in the abstract about the legacy of residential schools. I had the knowledge, I had the education, I had the degree that focused on that area. Later as a public servant and as a CEO of one of the country's largest financial institutions, I worked on treaty negotiations, indigenous self-government, access to finance and financial inclusion and equity. I knew the issues, I had the knowledge, I had the education, but I think I lacked the understanding Understanding that really connects ideas to our emotions, to who we are as people at our heart. And like many, I truly didn't understand until the announcement and the discovery of the 215 graves of children who died at the Kamloops Residential School, the school that I looked upon each and every day growing up, but I did not really understand. So as you embark on your careers from this point, I really want to leave you with the idea that you have so much that you have learned and the knowledge that you have that will be essential in your journey going forward. But unless it's paired with humility, with empathy, it will lack understanding. And understanding is what gives us the courage to put those ideas into action, even when it's difficult, to make things better for ourselves, for our families, and for our communities. It's one of the reasons I love Simon Fraser University. You know, in addition to being one of Canada's great institutions of higher learning and advanced research, SFU absolutely radiates with the spirit of community and common purpose. From its very founding, SFU has tried to pair knowledge with understanding. It's tried to foster better understanding through experience. First as a radical campus in the 1960s, and today as an engaged community and university. It's actually what sets SFU apart and sets your degree apart as you go forward into the world. As you leave this institution, you're equipped with the skills you need to succeed. But I hope the wisdom and understanding you also need to thrive. Of course, that journey doesn't end today. It takes a lifetime. The search for truth has no terminus. So be patient, be just, be humble, and always seek to understand. And your world, and thus ours, will be better for it. You know, I can see even through the masks, we've all become good at recognizing what smiling eyes look like. And I can tell you from this vantage point, I look at your friends and families gathered here uh, in front, and I see nothing but pride and smiling eyes. We are all so very, very proud of you. On behalf of everyone in the SFA community, please let me extend our heartfelt congratulations both in words and smiling eyes. I now call upon the president of our university, Dr. Joy Johnson, for her address. Thank you. Madam Chancellor, graduates, honored guests, Welcome everyone to this very, very special convocation ceremony. And I want to begin by acknowledging that I am privileged to be speaking to you today from the unceded traditional territories of the Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, Musqueam, and Coquitlam peoples. And I recognize that as a settler on these lands, I have a responsibility to address and repair relations with Indigenous peoples whose lands we occupy. Acknowledging this is an important step towards reconciliation. As I look out from this podium today and see all of you here, I am filled with enormous gratitude. I'm just so pleased that we're here together in person and thrilled that so many of you are also joining us online. 
It's so great to be back together again. It's an incredible feeling. And I recognize that even though some of you aren't here in person, we are all gathered together in spirit. You really are an amazing graduating class. I know it wasn't easy. There were many hurdles along the way. And I am sure that earning a degree during a global pandemic wasn't quite what you expected when you got your first letter of acceptance here at Simon Fraser University. But you persevered, you pushed through, and you will long be remembered for what you have achieved. And we are all so very, very proud of you. So congratulations. So now as you begin your next chapter of your lives, each of you will take your own path and follow your own muse. But as you do, always remember this. With your degree, everyone shares something very important in common. You share the trust that education confers, not only to pursue your own dreams and aspirations, but to contribute to the well-being and success of the community that surrounds and supports you. Those values come to life at Simon Fraser University. We have never been content to watch history unfold from the sidelines. Our instinct is to always engage, to lead, to be active participants in the world around us. We're a community of change makers because at SFU, we believe that education is the most powerful weapon we can use to change the world. Nelson Mandela said that, and he was right. Education at every level helps nurture knowledge. It helps nurture empathy and humility that leads to lasting change. So, as you look ahead to your future, I ask you to use that power wisely. You're graduating at a pivotal time in history. There is so much that we need to do to repair and heal the world, and you have the opportunity to make an enormous difference. But of course, we can put our minds to these things tomorrow. For now, I think it is a time for celebration. It's a time for big hugs, for pats on the back with those in your circle, of course, for laughter, and yes, I'm sure a few tears as well. Earning a university degree is one of life's greatest accomplishments. And it's a time to give thanks. Give thanks to everyone who have helped you along the way. Parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, friends, teachers, professors, counselors, and advisors. They can't all be here today, so please make sure you remember to reach out and thank them. We all stand on each other's shoulders for support and guidance. We stand on the shoulders of giants. And now, with your SFU degree in hand, you are part of an extended family of SFU alumni that spams the country and the globe. People from all walks of life doing extraordinary things. So connect with them, learn from them, and know that everyone in the SFU community are always here for you. Our heartfelt thanks and congratulations. We are so, so fortunate to know you. So until we meet again, thank you very much. Thank you, President Johnson. SFU's honorary degree is the highest honor conferred by our university. Degrees are awarded to distinguished individuals in recognition of their scholarly, scientific, or artistic achievement, or in recognition of exceptional contribution to the public good through professional or philanthropic activity. Their achievements celebrate our university's values and serve as an inspiration. They are role models to our students, graduates, and entire community. Dr. Wally Opel was conferred an honorary degree 
earlier this year in June. We are delighted that he will be providing the convocation address to us today. To present Dr. Wally Opal, I'm pleased to welcome Dr. Joanne Curry. Dr. Curry is SFU's Vice President of External Relations and has made a career of advancing post-secondary education and connecting the university with community, government, and business. She led the establishment of Simon Fraser University's Surrey campus in 2002 and its initial executive director. Joanne holds a doctorate in business from the University of Bath and is a proud alumnus of SFU with a Master's of Business Administration. Dr. Curry. Good afternoon, Madam Chancellor. Madam Chancellor, it is my honour to present the Honourable Dr. Wallace Teru Opal, or Wally as he is best known to us, an esteemed lawyer, judge and public servant whose life work has made British Columbia a safer, more just and more inclusive society. Raised by his widowed mother on Vancouver Island, Dr. Opal worked at local sawmills and logging camps to pay for his legal education at the University of British Columbia. After graduation, he worked for a decade as a criminal lawyer, eventually being named to the County Court of BC in 1981, the first judge of Indian heritage outside of India. In 1985, he rose to BC's Supreme Court and to then the BC Court of Appeal in 2003. Two years later, he was elected as MLA for Vancouver Fraserview and served as Attorney General and Minister Responsible for Multiculturalism. Today, he's a respected arbitrator and mediator. Throughout his long career, Dr. Opal has been an engaged leader and a tireless advocate for British Columbia's most vulnerable citizens. He distinguished himself as an expert facilitator of very challenging public inquiries, from his landmark 1994 review of policing to the more recent Missing Women's Commission of Inquiry, both of which delivered significant reforms to BC's policing and justice systems. He's also served on numerous boards in support of humanitarian and cultural causes, including the Dr. Peter AIDS Foundation, the CKNW Orphans Fund, and much to our benefit, Chair of SFU's own India Advisory Council. For his outstanding service to the province, Dr. Opal was named to the Order of British Columbia in 2017, the most recent of a long string of honours that include the Queen's Diamond Jubilee Award, the World Sikh Organization Leader Award, the Justice Institute of BC's Anthony Pandaja's Award for Outstanding Contributions in the Field of Public Safety, and the Drishti Magazine Humanitarian Award. For his dedication to public service and safety, and for the myriad ways he has advanced social justice to the benefit of all British Columbians, Dr. Wally Opal was conferred virtually with the degree of Doctors of Law Honoris Causa in June of 2021. Congratulations, Dr. Opal. Dr. Wally Opal will be accompanied by Dr. Catherine Deverne, Verne, Vice President, Academic and Provost, and Ms. Ramana Kanhamani, Vice Provost and Associate Vice President, Students and International, to sign the Honorary Degree Register.
It is now my great pleasure to call upon Dr. Wally Opal for his Convocation Address. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, I'm uh, just overwhelmed. And uh, when uh, Dr. Johnson and uh, Joanne Curry called me, and it was a huge, huge impact on me emotionally uh, to, be, uh, to be so recognized by uh, Simon Fraser University. So, uh, so I'm so pleased to be here, and uh, I'm honored, deeply honored, to have this degree bestowed upon me. Now it's... Um, customary for people who have these honors conferred on them to, to make some remarks, to make a speech. But I note that the program that, that uh, governs these proceedings says that I have five minutes. Um, I'm a former judge of the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeal, and no one puts time limits on judges. But I'm... I'm uh, indebted to you for your procedures, and so I'll try and keep within the, in the uh, five minutes. I'm, uh, I'm the son of immigrant parents. My uh, parents came here from northern India in the 1930s during the uh, height of the Depression. Uh, they spoke very little English. They were poor. In fact, um, the, uh, my father didn't have a have a job for a number of years during the Depression. He uh, died when I was 10 years old and my mother raised us. But they didn't have the right to vote in Canada until 1947 because Asians did not have the right of citizenship in this country. And if you think there's an injustice in that, you should know that the First Nations people, the people who were the stewards of the land and owned this country, the indigenous people, did not have the right to vote here until 1960. So that sort of gets me into what I really want to talk to you about within the parameters of the time that I had. I'm sure you're well aware of what took place here in the last Thursday on the 30th of September when the, pres the federal government declared they, that it to be a day of commemoration and for us to think carefully of the Truth and Reconciliation Report the recommendations that were made, the evidence that was contained in that report, and most of all, of the historical mistreatment of Aboriginal people in this country. And that's something that we need to think about. And that came, of course, on the heels of the finding of the unmarked graves that kept rising in this country. So I raised those points to tell you that there's been a huge injustice to the First Nations people in this country. And that's something that you, the graduates, have to address your minds to. You're in a very privileged position, an honored position, where you're being given a degree and you have a huge future that you can do huge things for this country, and particularly to correct the wrongs that have been inflicted on many of our uh, citizens, particularly the First Nations people. I am. I did the Commission of Inquiry into Missing and Murdered Women, the Picton Inquiry. Picton was the largest mass murderer in Canadian history. A Lar large number of his victims were First Nations women. They were treated poorly by the institutions of our country. And that's something we need to keep in mind when we look towards the future. And I think that uh, the, the, all of us, all of us have to look within our hearts to find out what we can best do to correct the wrongs of the past. And it's, uh, the, the potential is unlimited, and I congratulate each and every one of you who are receiving degrees today to, regardless of whatever you do in your future, in your endeavors, in your occupations, in your professions, one thing you need to keep in mind that we live in Canada. Canada, in so many ways, is the best country in the world as far as the Western democracies are, democracies are concerned. We have a justice system that's open, accessible. We have a, a free of co political interference, free of political corruption. We have a policing system, a health care system. Genuinely, we operate under the rule of law, and that's important, where everybody is equal before the law. And those are things that we need to keep in mind. 
We can't take those things for granted. So if there's one thing you take away from what I say here this afternoon, it is that we owe it to ourselves, owe it to our country, and owe it to our forefathers that we need to correct those wrongs that I've made reference to. Keep in mind that the, the residential school debacle, the horrible tragedies that took place when the Europeans came here and they determined that the Aboriginal people had to take the Indian out of the Indian. And those are things that are not, they weren't that far gone in our past. As I've said to you, the um, indigenous people did not have the right to vote here until 1960. And that wasn't that far in our, in our past, and we need to keep that in mind. So I congratulate all of you who are graduating. I know this is a huge day in your lives, and it's a day that you'll remember forever. And uh, so I urge you to do something in social justice, to correct those things that need to be corrected, and keep in mind that we live in a great country, but we have an underbelly of issues that need to be dealt with. And you're in a unique position because of the education that you've received, because of the academic background that you've received that will urge you to become involved in these, uh, in these endeavors. Again, uh, I, uh, I want to thank uh, uh, President Joy Johnson, uh, Chancellor Bruman, Joanne Curry, and all of those people who are affiliated with this university because this, as I said at the outset of my remarks to you, is, is a huge honor for me, for my family, and if my mother was alive today, she'd actually believe all those nice things that have been said about me. So I, I'm, an, I'm humbled by, uh, by this uh, honor that you've conveyed upon me, and I thank you sincerely from, uh, from the bottom of my heart. Thank you uh, very much, Dr. Opal, for your call for social justice and reminding us of the work that lies ahead. As a part of convocation, the Alumni Association is going to present um, the Simon Fraser University alumni pin to graduates after they leave the stage. And our alumni are incredibly important to us, and we're pleased that this symbolic presentation will launch you on your new role as an alumni of Simon Fraser University. Uh, Ms. Precious um, Iel received a Bachelor of Arts degree in Criminology in 2014. She is also currently the Vice President of the SFU Alumni Association Board. And I now invite Mr. Uh, Ms. Iel to the lectern to bring greetings to the graduates. Thank you. Thank you, President Johnson. Good afternoon, SFU's newest alumni. Today, your relationship with SFU evolves as you officially become lifetime members of a worldwide network with more than 170,000 alumni in over 140 countries. Staying connected to SFU as an alumnus provides you with opportunities to learn, to grow, thrive through local, national, and international events, career resources, library services, and many other value-added benefits. As alumni, you now serve as ambassadors for SFU in your community through your journey, you will also inspire current and future students to dream, to strive for excellence, and to make the mark in society. Please stay connected to us through social media and by signing up for the alumni email forwarding service. We want to hear from you and have a chance to celebrate your successes. After you cross the stage today, it will be my pleasure to present you with an alumni pin. Wear it as a symbol of your incredible achievement and connection to SFU. Be proud of your accomplishments. Be proud of your SFU credentials. 
and thank you for investing your time, your energy, and talents in this great university. Congratulations and welcome to SFU's global community of alumni. Thank you, President Johnson. Thank you very much, Precious. Before the graduates are presented individually uh, to the Chancellor, Ms. Jennifer Chu, a member of the, sorry, Joe, a, a member of the graduating class will address convocation. Jennifer is graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in Psychology and a minor in Publishing. She is part of the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences Mentorship Program and an advocate for student well-being. Jennifer worked to improve accessibility and mental health supports at SFU and had many opportunities to create memorable experiences for others. In the future, she hopes to inspire others to create more supportive and inclusive communities. I am now pleased to call upon Jennifer Zhao for the graduate address. Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you everyone for being here today. First, I'd like to acknowledge that we're located on the traditional unceded territories of the Coast Salish peoples, including the Musqueam, Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, Coquitlam, and Katsi nations. Unceded means that these territories have never been handed over, sold, or given up by these nations. We occupy this land because the settler colony of BC was created using forms of strategic violence and dispossession, resulting in lasting injustices that persist today. We should be aware that such forms of colonial violence continue to be established upon these territories, like lack of meaningful consultation with indigenous nations on the TMX pipeline. I urge you to check native-land.ca to learn whose lands you're on. You can learn more about supporting indigenous peoples from the First Nations Student Association at SFU or take a free online course called Indigenous Canada at University of Alberta. And now I want to hear from you. Please raise your hand if you've ever joked about construction and waiting for the sub to open. Okay, now what about if you've ever waited in those huge lines for buses while it was snowing? Okay, that's a lot of you. Um, lastly, raise your hand if you've ever gotten lost in RCB. So I don't know everyone here, yet we're still connected through shared experiences unique to SFU. If you joked about construction and the sub delays, we learned how to be very, very patient. The construction kind of forced us to be patient, but this experience taught us more than we know. Seeing the sub, I feel like those years of waiting were worth it because future students will find a place to belong. Students from marginalized communities now have somewhere they can go to for support after a hard-fought campaign that resulted in spaces for groups like SFU Students of Caribbean and African Ancestry, Simon Fraser Public Interest Research Group, SFU Disability and Neurodiversity Alliance, and more. We all helped make this possible for future students. For anyone that has waited to take a bus to or from Burnaby Mountain, especially when it was snowing, then you learned to be brave. I remember being shocked and frustrated at the long lines. Yet, especially on snowy days, it was the sense of camaraderie from waiting that I remember the most. I saw people taking pictures of the long lines and I knew they'd end up on SFU Dank Memes Gang Facebook group. It's amazing how we can turn our code suffering into warm laughter and inside jokes. And these jokes made us feel more prepared to face the snow. Lastly, if you've ever gotten lost in RCB, you learn how to navigate and find support. I suck at reading maps, but I still looked for them so I could navigate RCB a little easier. I may have gotten lost every now and then, but I knew there would always be something or someone to help me find my way. To me, the metaphorical map that helped me navigate university life was the FAST Mentorship Program. I was so lost as a first year. I didn't know what I wanted to do, and I still kind of don't. Um, but luckily, mentors like Brian Fox helped me find confidence in myself and become the student leader that I am today. I hope you were also able to find maps that helped you navigate your undergraduate journey. Compared to RCB, navigating life after graduation should be way easier. And it doesn't matter how long it takes to get to your destination because life isn't a race. 
We made it here despite the pandemic, and I'm proud of all of us for being so resilient. We've learned so much more than just legal studies, criminology, and psychology. We learned some life lessons during our time at SFU without even realizing it. I'll miss studying with friends, grabbing free food on campus, and most of all, I'll miss my U Pass. The one thing I won't miss is trying to hide how out of breath I was while climbing those Seba Hall stairs. So what about you? What will you miss? And what are you looking forward to? Anyway, congratulations to us, the grad class of 2021. Remember what we've learned here, and good luck on the next step of your journey. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Jennifer, for that great speech. I did put my hand up a few times as well, I have to admit. Uh, so now, the members of the graduating class will now be presented to the chancellor en masse to their degrees. So can our graduating class please rise? Madam Chancellor, I present to you those scholars who have fulfilled the statutory requirements laid down um, by the Senate of this university and request that you confer, confer upon them the degrees for which they are now recommended. Mm. By virtue of the authority vested in me and in the Senate, of this university, I hereby admit you to your various and several degrees. Congratulations. The graduates can now be seated. The members of the graduating class here in Convocation Mall will now be presented individually to the Chancellor. The entire graduating class will be presented online following today's formal proceedings. But before we get started, just a few requests for those of you who are in the mall with us today. We're going to ask you uh, to please refrain from applaud applauding too loudly the individual members of the graduating class. People like to hear their names called out um, and until each group um, of degrees has been conferred. This does not uh, apply to our, the conferral of our doctor doctoral degrees and really spontaneous expressions of enthusiasm will not be frowned upon, I have to say. As a courtesy to others, as well as per health and safety protocols, please remain seated until the conclusion of the ceremony. Um, would the graduates please return to your seats following the receipt of your degrees? However, for all, our doctoral uh, graduates, please join our colleagues on the platform. And for those of you at home, make lots of noise and hug those in your circle. The degrees in the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences will now be conferred. Madam Chancellor, I invite Dr. Jeff Dirksen, Dean and Associate Provost, Graduate and Postdoctoral Studies, to begin the presentation of students earning graduate degrees. Madam Chancellor, the graduates of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences will now be presented. I invite Dr. Peter Hall, Dean Pro Tem of the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences, to join us. Dr. Alicia Christensen, supervised by Dr. Jody Viljoen. Dr. Stephanie Dawson, supervised by Dr. Garth Davies. Dr. Carla Oberth, supervised by Dr. Robert McMahon. Great work. 
Dr. Richard Rosenthal. Supervised by Dr. David McAllister. Dr. Yuening Wang, supervised by Dr. Robert Lay. Dr. Sarah Yurchich, supervised by Dr. Joan Brockman. Madam Chancellor, the graduates of master's degrees in the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences will now be presented. Brittany Dennett. Colin Doe. Monica Lai. Ryan Sandrin. Maitland Waddell. Noel Workington. Congratulations, graduates. Madam Chancellor, I invite the Dean Pro Tem of the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences, Dr. Peter Hall, to begin the presentation of students earning undergraduate degrees. Madam Chancellor, the graduates of the degree of Bachelor of Arts in the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences will now be presented. Connor Alderson. Caitlin Almeida. Nick Jan Amino Shera. Catherine Anderson. Tara Anderson. Jessica Baggett. Fatima Bajwa. Brittany Banga. Tiana Bobario. Cassandra Byron. Florence Calder. Christina Callahan. Mariah Carpenter. Eric Chu. Yi Chen Cho. Kyla Chua. Allison Chung. Josie Corrado. Valentina DeBay. Ines De Veras. Isha Dillon. Simran Dillon. Daba Dien. 
Jessica Estrada. Megan Foster. Anita Friedman. Nico Gissi. Denora Michelle Gonzalez. Harveen Grello. Shivya Gupta. Minhi Ha. Janelle Hargraves. Ting Ting He. Brenda Ho. Joel Senji Ho. Tyler Jack. Ganeev Jawar. Shena Az Johal. Christina Johnstone. Sonia Kaila. Gupreet Cabra. Zainab Khan. Alexander Kirshner. Brandon Lamb. Michelle Lamb. Sai Chen Li. Liying Liang. Tatiana Laporta. Lily Lee. Adrian Lee. Toby Lau. Stephanie Matos. Simrandeep Ma. Rachel Ma. Michelle Adrienne Macapago. Maya McDonald. Olivia Michelle Marta Caputri. Ora Zakevli Messiri. Hannah Nielsen. Vanessa Nguyen. Caitlin Mercier. Francis Mercurio. Larissa Mullen. Muskan Muhammad. Daniela Pena.
Selena Fun. Haley Patras. Alvin Powell. Wendy Padilla. Julia Shibazaki. Tanya Seth. Sophia Savchina. Axel Save. Jordan Purdy. Martina Pilici. Jing Sun. Adam Starr. Adriana Soros. Eleanor Summers. Gusharan Sidhu. Katya Siamar. Kathleen Trafford. Titu Trang Trang. Trutnon Trang Trang. Claudio Trejo Gonzalez. Stephanie Wu. Jasleen Tiwana. Valerie Tan. Rory Suzokovich. Dinesh Santhareswaran. <laughs> Jillian Utzik. <laughs> Calista Van Beest. <laughs> Pajari Van Avon. Ashna Walia. Anna Wilson. Caitlin Wright. Mungsi Yang. Jennifer Yick. Cameron Yuan. Trevor Zana. Raylin Zhang. Sung Yuan Zhang. Raya Zubashchenko. Madam Chancellor, the student who has completed the requirements for the certificate in the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences will now be presented.
Raisel Robles. We're still having some graduates having their pictures taken at the back, but I would ask all of you to please rise. The graduating, just the graduating class. Sorry, sorry, I wasn't clear there. <laughs> I know you needed a little exercise. <laughs> graduating class, please rise. So let me say, I want to congratulate each and every one of you on the completion of your degree. It is an impressive achievement, and I would like to encourage your family and friends to communicate their hearty congratulations to you by whatever means. And for those in the mall and members of the platform, please join me in applauding the graduating class of the fall of 2021. They really do deserve our applause, I have to say, so congratulations. Now, I invite the members of the graduating class to reciprocate by applauding your family, friends, faculty and staff, and all of those who have helped you reach this goal. You can now be seated. Well, that was fantastic. Friends, this completes the formal awarding of degrees. Some graduates recommended by the Senate for degrees today are unable to be present here in Convocation Mall, and their names have therefore not been read out. I now admit them to the appropriate degrees as shown in the program. As well, the names of the fall, the fall 2021 graduates will be read out and shown online shortly. I have several thank yous to express in closing. First, to all of you here and online for joining us on such a celebratory day. It really makes all the difference to have friends and family with us. And to the many staff, volunteers, faculty members who have worked together to run a safe and smooth Convocation Day, the first in many, many months, our great thanks to all of you. For our online guests, please stay for the virtual graduate procession during which time all graduates will be individually named. This brings to a close the formal part of this afternoon's Convocation. For those of you in the mall, to ensure that we all exit in a safe and orderly manner, please follow the instructions of the staff that you will see at the sides of the mall. And for now, please rise and remain standing at your places as the platform party recedes. Thank you very much. Now presenting the graduates from the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences, Dr. Alicia Christensen, supervised by Dr. Jody Viljoen, Dr. Stephanie Dawson, supervised by Dr. Garth Davies.
Dr. Don North, co-supervised by Dr. David McAllister and Dr. Cheryl Webster. Dr. Carla Oberth, supervised by Dr. Robert McMahon. Dr. Richard Rosenthal, supervised by Dr. David McAllister. Dr. Yuening Wang, supervised by Dr. Robert Lay. Dr. Sarah Yurchich, supervised by Dr. Joan Brockman. Mackenzie Braley. Brittany Dennett. Colin Doe. Philippa Hood. Stephanie King. Monica Lai. Henri Lu. Mernaz Pekarniker. Ryan Sandrin. Maitland Waddell. Noel Warkenton. Rebecca Wood. Susan Eine. Connor Alderson. Caitlin Almeida. Supitsara Amarapitak. Nick Jan Amino Sherai. Catherine Anderson. Tara Anderson. Stuart Angel. Jessica Baggett. Fatima Bajwa. Brittany Banga. Ranika Belin. Tiana Bobariu. Juliana Buono. Cassandra Byron. Florence Calder. Christina Callahan. Mariah Carpenter. Tyler Chang. Eric Chu. Rita Cho. Yi Chen Cho. Kyla Chua. Allison Chung. Cassidy Collins. Josie Corrado. Talena Davis. Valentina DeBay. Rui Dung. Ines De Veras. Isha Dillon. Simran Dillon. Daba Dien. Jose Dorantes. Jessica Estrada. Megan Foster. Anita Friedman. Xiao Tong Fu. James Gesaroli. Nico Gisi. Denora Michelle Gonsalves. Callum Graff. Harveen Grewal. 
Shivya Gupta. Minhi Ha. Janelle Hargraves. Ting Ting He. Teddy Hurd. Won Jae Her. Taylor Hewitt. Brenda Ho. Joel Sinji Ho. Raquel Hribko. Detty Mole James. Tyler Jang. Ganiv Jawar. Shena Az Johal. Christina Johnstone. Sonia Kaila. Karen Veer Kalsi. Stephen Kiefel. Gupreet Cabra. Zainab Khan. Kimberly Klassen. Jacob Knudsen. Alexander Kirshner. Ki Lin Lai. Chanvir Lali. Brandon Lamb. Michelle Lamb. Toby Lau. Danielle Law. Adrian Lee. Lily Lee. Sarah Lee. Tatiana Laporta. Liying Liang. Tang Te Liao. Mary Margaret F. Lim. Sai Chen Lin. Kelvin Liu. Rachel Ma. Simrandeep Man. Michelle Adrienne Macapagal. Maya McDonald. Olivia Michelle Mardika Putri. Stephanie Matos. Brandon Matin. Caitlin Mercier. Francis Mercurio. Orizakevwi Masiri. Elsie Miller. Larissa Mowat. Muskan Muhammad. Jenna Lee Naylor. Wensi Nung. Vanessa Nguyen. Hannah Nielsen. Hannah Ogawa. Wendy Padilla. Alvin Pang. Sonia Parasenti. Haley Patras. 
Daniela Pena. Selena Fan. Martina Pilici. Daniel Poon. Jordan Purden. Cristiano Caliza. Manjo Benrai. Paula Romero Harrison. Alejandra Saldana. Brianne Sanderson. Axel Save. Sofia Savchina. Alan Savovich. Tanya Seth. Julia Shibazaki. Jaya Shridhar. Katya Siamar. Gusharan Sidhu. Rashjivan Sidhu. Brendan Singh. Navarit Singh. Chi Lung Sit. Eleanor Summers. Adriana Soros. Adam Starry. Jing Sun. Dinesh Santhareswaran. Rory Suzokovich. Valerie Tan. Jasleen Tiwana. Kathleen Trafford. Titu Trang Tran. Trutnon Tran Trat. Claudia Trejo Gonzalez. Tatiana Tirsa. Stephanie Wu. Jillian Utzig. Callista Van Beest. Pajari Van Avong. Ashna Walia. Anna Wilson. Diane Wong. Joshua Wong. Caitlin Wright. Si Chi Wu. Meng Si Yang. Xuan Yang. Lu Chuan Ye. Jennifer Yik. Jia Yu. Cameron Yuan. Trevor Zanon. Hafez Zagari. Madeline Zhang. Raylin Zhang. Xiao Wei Zhang. Sheng Yuan Zhang. Wen Quan Zhu. Zhe Ying Zhu. Daria Zubashchenko.
Justin Arsenault. Max Merrick Wren. Gagandeep Sangha. Helen Sharp. Angie Ao. Kathy Lam. Sarwan Pahal. Lejla Rashiti. Rezel Robles.